if it is possible to make a, a break in the wall that will allow academia to ask these fundamental questions that exist and allow them in the science classrooms as well. It'd be nice to see the scientific establishment lose some of its prestige and power. The last time science had no prestige, we had the Dark Ages. Professor Dawkins, how are you? I'm Ben Stein. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. How are you? Fine, thank you. You have, uh, you have written that uh, God is a psychotic delinquent invented by mad, deluded people. No, I didn't say quite that. I said something rather better than that. Oh, well, please tell us what you said. Please tell us what you said. Um, I, well, I would have to read it from, from, from the book. No, please. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. So that's what you think of God? Yeah. How about, how about if people believed in a God of infinite lovingness and kindness and forgiveness and generosity, sort of like the modern day God. Why spoil it for them? Oh, um... Why not just let them have their fun I'm and enjoy happy. it? I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. I, I write a book, people can read it if, if they want to. Um, I believe that it is a liberating thing to free yourself from primitive superstition. So religion is a primitive superstition? Oh, I, I think it is, yes. So, uh, you believe it's liberating to uh, tell people that there is no God? No. Do try and pay attention. He says he thinks it's liberating to give up God. Thus, he's liberating people, not making himself feel liberated. He's already had the liberating experience. I think a lot of people, when they give up God, feel a great sense of release uh, and freedom. Why do you think that? I mean, what's your, well, dad, what's your science? Data. I think, well, I've had a lot of, of letters saying that. and I've, There are 8 billion people in the world, yeah, Dr. Yeah, Dawkins. Know, How many letters yeah, do you have? No, I have? Dawkins thinks that giving up God is a liberating experience. This is based on the letters of those who have actually given up God. Although the world contains a great many people, a majority of them haven't given up God. All of these people are useless for determining whether or not giving up God is liberating, since they haven't. The ratio would then be people who've given up God and found it to be liberating to people who've given up God and found it to be bad. Being a very prominent and outspoken atheist, I think it's safe to say that the letters he gets is from a significant portion of the atheists. Professor Dawkins seemed so convinced that God doesn't exist that I wondered if he would be willing to put a number on it. Well, it's hard to put a figure on it, but, but I, I, I mean, I put it as something like, you know, 99% against or something. Well, how do you know it's 99% against, don't. say, in 97? No, I did, you asked me to put a figure on it, and I, it, I'm not comfortable putting a figure on it. I think it's, I, I just think it's very unlikely. Ben Stein is trying to force Richard Dawkins to place a quantitative measurement on a qualitative analysis. What's more, an analysis can only be based on the information at hand. Thus, Dawkins is actually technically incorrect. Judging from the information at hand, we have zero evidence for the existence of God, thus the probability with the information on hand is zero percent. Dawkins is hesitant to assign this number because it really is impossible to project the probability on what evidence we will find. That said, the possibility of new evidence does not grant any validity to an argument. That would be an appeal to ignorance.
Well, then who did create the heavens and the earth? Why do you use the word who? You see, you, you, you immediately beg the question by using the word who. Well, then how did it get created? The word created likewise implies a creator. What you mean is, how did the universe form? Also, I think Dawkins has realized by now that this is not simply Crossroads, but a bit of a propaganda film. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how it got started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. And what was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. Right, and how did that happen? I told you we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, no. no, no nor has anybody. Nor has anyone else. Perhaps we can chalk this one up to stage fright? We do have several hypotheses for the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. We don't know everything because there are several plausible explanations. There's just been some trouble deciding which one is more likely. So we do have ideas. They just haven't had all the kinks worked out yet. What do you think is the possibility that there, that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in, well, in evolution? It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization e evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an and a intriguing possibility. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? You asked him this. What do you think is the possibility that, there, that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in, well, in evolution? He gave you a possible way that intelligent design could be observed through genetics were it real. See, that is a testable prediction. Only thing is, it tests false. This signature would have no importance to the host protein synthesis and would contain complex information. For example, if we were to look through the long strands of junk DNA and found the Fibonacci sequence coded in base 4, that would be a sign of ID. If this sequence was found in all animals and found to serve no purpose whatsoever, the odds that they would all share it and that mutation would not affect it would be too great to account for. Since it's not used in RNA transcription, it wouldn't be affected by natural selection, so the odds would remain tremendous. Such a signature has never been found. Academic freedom, though. You may content yourself with looking for it. Just don't pretend it exists and teach it to the classroom. So, Professor Dawkins was not against intelligent design, just certain types of designers, such as God. Intelligent design proposes two possible designers, God and aliens. Dawkins says that saying God did it isn't science, as it's untestable. Guess which one that leaves. So, Professor Dawkins was not against intelligent design, just certain types of designers, such as God. This is not a religious argument. This is not a religious argument. This is not a religious argument. And so why would you bring religion into it? You don't need to religion. This is a red herring. Such as God. Ben, I'd like you to talk to the scientists. You don't want to get your science from me. But if the intelligent design people are right, God isn't hidden. We may even be able to encounter God through science. And so why would you bring religion into it? You don't need religion. This is a red herring.